This is still the conversation. Now, most goods coming from Angola, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Gambia, Mali, Madagascar, and Mauritania will no longer have tariffs on them when entering the Chinese market. Now, China is the biggest consumer of culvert from DR Congo, while a booming cafe culture amongst Chinese youth is driving sales of coffee. Now, China's new policy, which comes into effect on Christmas Day, follows criticism that it focuses on buying mainly raw materials from the African continent. That has been touted by Chinese Customs Tariff Commission of the State Council as proof of the spirit of China-Africa friendship and cooperation, leading to a high-quality China-Africa community with a shared future. Now, joining me, of course, on the program at this time is Dr. David Masanga, African Affairs Analyst, joining from London, United Kingdom. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much, my brother, across there in, in the tropics of Africa. Thank you very much. You are enjoying the tropics. I'm in a, in, in a very cold place. Thank you very much. All right. Let's now, go. Now, let's, let's of course, uh, start with uh, your immediate reaction to this particular deal. What does it portend? Uh, particularly for the African economy? It does very well, but will the African economies keep their, their back end to the people, the farmers, who are going to grow these crops? Will that money come back? I hope somebody should tell China, and we are telling China, some of us who are great friends of the African people, we want to tell China that put stringent measures on how they use this money when it is duty free, it returns. Make sure that they don't bank this money anywhere, but the money goes back to hospitals, to roads, to his schools, to housing, to other very many other institutions that need to be, to education, all these institutions who need that money back here, not banked somewhere across uh, the world, and then you come back to Africa with nothing after having a duty free exports that have gone, and there's no duty cut conducted on them. Mm, now, China's new policy actually follows criticism that it focuses more, that's before now, on buying mainly raw materials from the African continent. Uh, would you say there's some sort of substance to this claim? There, 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 there substance to this claim, but China comes with the money. It doesn't come with letters of credit, my brother. You, you see the people saying that are the same people who are, who come with letters of credit. We know them. America, France, and Britain, they want letters of credit. You have to open a letter of credit in order to have the access to this money. But the Chinese come with the hard cash. If they are buying these goods, they are buying them in the hard cash. There is some credit in that type of statement because you need... You need to have factories here. We must change the policy to have factories on the African continent to produce those duty-free markets, that uh, goods that will go to China, so that our 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 our, our people get money, uh, get jobs, get all the facilities and benefits that go with the cash crops that are having a duty-free. Mm. Now, how do, sincere do you consider? this particular policy? Because recently, Africa has seen some sort of scramble, you know, by the West. We are seeing uh, uh, America and Russia trying to exert some sort of influence uh, when it comes to, you know, uh, world power and all of that. And right now, we're beginning to also see China, you know, exert its own uh, level of influence in terms of uh, providing loans, aids, you know, uh, and also, uh, what I call it, infrastructural support and all of that. Now, how sincere do you think this policy is when it comes to uh, the African market? I think the Chinese are very sincere on the African market. That is true. They are very sincere and they want... So the, the, the are Africa, you saying there's the no political, there, there no political yeah. undertone to this? What political undertone? Does America come and tell you that you must go and... And dress all time at night to go and sleep. Does, does China tell you to do so? No. So they have no political undertones on the Chinese. Chinese don't come to these countries in Africa to interfere with internal affairs of the people of Africa. 
but we have a problem here that makes we have a problem in with the americans they come to interfere look at all the countries that they have listed here angola congo gambia madagascar mali Mauritania. these are countries that have visa visa under visa threat any time visa threat by americans because they have told them we want you to do what we want we want you to change your culture the way you we want you are but chinese don't come here to change our culture chinese come here with their money they put the money in the box we make the money the, the, the roads they constructed the roads look at the roads they have constructed come to kenya go to you to uganda some parts of uganda go to zambia go to tanzania go to zimbabwe go to ethiopia go in most of the places they have constructed the roads that are making it possible for our people apart from a few countries that have not utilized the chinese loans very many countries in africa in fact i am one of the few people who tells african countries that we better create in each country in africa a province for china because in 20 years to come we shall have Chinese across Africa in every country of Africa. And because they are having intermarriages, they are having social uh, 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 you know, contacts with our population. So you expect children to be produced. You expect people to come up and say, hey, we are now Kenyans. Hey, we are now Ugandans. We are Nigerians. We are born here. But they will have Chinese. All right. I, I'm, okay. Now, b b before I let uh, I let you go, Dr. Masanga, you, you talked about loans. We know that quite a number of African countries owe the Chinese a lot of money. Now, I, I would appreciate if you can give me a response in 30 seconds vis-a-vis -vis this policy. Uh, what is your take in terms of paying back those loans and also these policies that we are seeing? better pay the, the money back because we don't want to have problems and the Chinese coming to take up all our places, our infrastructure again and our occupiers. We have to be careful as we get this money. Each country must assess the needs for this money. We should simply not go and borrow, 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 not knowing that in the future we might not pay. That is the way we should do business. But otherwise for me, they have done very well to get the Americans working. There is no project of America on African continent that I see a road made by America. I haven't. I only see words, embargo, sanctions, visa slaps, and so on on African continent. So China has come in to rescue most of us, most of the countries in Africa. Good job done, but be careful. Don't overborrow and then end up losing your infrastructure. All right, uh, Dr. David Masanga, African Affairs Analyst, joining from uh, London, the United Kingdom. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. God bless you.